Alright, my computer is struggling, but still technically operational, so we're going to continue with this problem. So, uh, we want to prove this stuff. So, for one direction, as in most of these problems, one direction is easy and one's less easy. But in this one, one of the directions is really easy. So if f is bounded, then f is continuous. So f inverse 0 is closed because it's the inverse image under a continuous map of a closed set. And so there's that. So next, suppose that f inverse of 0 is closed. And we're going to do something here that I'm not a huge fan of, but is useful sometimes, and that is to look at a diagram. And this is a little bit of an algebra thing, but it ends up making this problem very quick. So we have this f bar. So this map, this projection map sends, this sends an element x to the quotient x plus m, where, oh, I should explain, um, so let, I'll, I'll write down, so let m be the kernel of f, then m is closed by assumption. Because what is, what is m? m is precisely f inverse of 0. Because the kernel is all the things that map to 0. So x maps to x, this quotient x plus m. This is this map. And then this is the injection from f bar to k. And so let's see here. So to prove f is continuous, suffices to prove the projection pi and the other map f bar r. Uh, f is injective since um, uh, we have quotiented by the kernel. So let's see here. This sends x plus m. Pretty sure this just sends x plus m to whatever f of x is. So, right, so basically you have a whole bunch of, you can have a whole bunch of things in x which map to 0 in k, uh, but they all be, they all belong to the element um, 0 plus m. And so under f bar, all of those things, it's just one coset. And so that's the, um, and so the kernel of this map is just the 0 coset. And we know that the, if the kernel is just the 0 and, and the 0 coset is the 0 element of x mod m, and we know that if, um, if the kernel of a map is just the zero element, then it's injective. So there we go. Uh, and what else? So by definition, the norm that we put on uh, x mod m is going to be less than or equal to x because what this is is this is the the infimum over all elements of m, of x plus m. Uh, well, this is sense here, since 0 is in m, right? Because 0 maps to 0 because f is linear. And so this, uh, this x plus m, this is the infimum over all here. Let, let's, let's write this out. 
So this is the infimum over all y in m of x plus y. And so that's certainly going to be less than or equal to a particular one, a particular element of m, which is 0. And so there we go. Um, and so, but, but this is, um, it's right by definition here, and then what is this? This is just the norm of the projection of x. So, what does that tell us? So pi is bounded, and it's obviously linear. and thus continuous. What about f? The dimension of k is 1. Well, let's just say it's finite, because that's really all we need. And since Here. Well, well, no, no. It, it, it's it's the the dimension of k is one, and f is injective. So the dimension of uh, x mod m equals one, uh, because otherwise this would not be injective. And then what else? So F is a linear map between finite dimensional vector spaces, so it's bounded. No, so so it's continuous. All right, so projection is continuous and f bar is continuous. So f is the composition of two continuous functions and thus it is continuous and thus we are done. Oh, well, it's continuous and it's also linear by assumption and so continuous implies bounded and then we're done.